What's up, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can migrate a save game from a vanilla Minecraft server onto a modded Minecraft server such as Bigot, Craft Bucket, Paper, etc, etc. So over here I have two folders on my desktop. One of them is a vanilla server and the other one is a Spigot server. You can already see that the folder structures look a little bit different. But what I'll do is I'll go ahead and connect to my vanilla server and we'll go ahead and build a little bit in the world. Right, there we go. So now we've generated chunks in not only the end, but also the nether over here. So our world is basically fully created. This is, of course, the vanilla Minecraft server. If I run slash plugins, you can see nothing is recognized. All that I'm going to do in order to start migrating the server from a vanilla server to a modded server is to simply, first of all, save everything by typing in save hyphen all and hitting enter. Then I'll hit stop to bring the server to a close. After doing that, I'll return to the main menu and you can see just my spigot server over here is running. I'll go ahead and join it to show you what it looks like. This is currently what the spigot server looks like. This is the previous world that I was working in. So now that we know that we have a world inside of the vanilla folder over here and would like to transfer it to the spigot folder over here, what exactly do we need to do? Well, let's go ahead and bring the spigot server to a stop as well. I don't really care about saving it as we'll be overwriting the files completely. I'll type in stop and wait for that to quit. So assuming that your spigot server or modded server over here has a couple of world files that you'd like to keep, make sure to create a backup of these three folders over here now, world, world underscore nether, and world underscore the end. You can of course cut these to a different folder, add them to a zip, etc, etc. We can see the contents of this folder is just a bunch of player information, regions, etc, etc. The world nether folder has a dim minus one folder with some regions inside of it and some information over here. The same goes for world the end. All we have to do is create a backup and then remove the existing ones from the modded server. Of course, you can leave those folders here, just empty them out. After recreating the folders world, nether and the end, we're going to start migrating the files across. So I'll put the spigot server on the right hand side and the vanilla server on the left hand side over here. All we have to do is in the vanilla server, locate the world folder and open it up. Then we'll open up the world folder on the modded server as well. All we have to do is select all of the files and then hold down control and left click on dim one and dim negative one. These files over here are all of the ones that relate to the overworld. Dim one is the end and dim minus one is the nether. So I'll go ahead and either copy or cut these files from our vanilla server into our modded server over here. Then I'll head back a folder on the modded server and we'll enter the nether folder over here, world underscore nether. I'll simply select dim minus one, cut and paste it in. Then we'll go back as well, world the end, and we'll move dim one across into here. Now we've successfully migrated all of our player inventories, worlds, etc, etc. Of course, if you'd like to migrate a couple more things such as bands, band players, ops, server properties, user cache, and whitelists, make sure to copy those across as well. Of course, if you have any other files in this folder, you may want to copy them as well if you have something custom going on. So now that we've migrated all of our settings and worlds across from the vanilla server onto our spigot server, all we have to do is simply relaunch our spigot server as such. I'll simply wait for it to load, and then I'll try and connect to it using my Minecraft client. Because the world version is exactly the same, nothing is going to clash. But of course, if you're moving from a higher version to a lower version, newer blocks and parts from people's inventories may permanently vanish. If you're moving from an older one to a newer one, new blocks won't be generated in existing chunks. You'll need to go ahead and generate new chunks in order to find new items. So now that we're connecting to our modded server, we're in game. And as you can see, we're exactly where we left off. If I had an inventory, I'd have all my stuff. I'm back in the exact same spot and here's both of the portals that we just created. You'll see a hole in the ceiling where we flew out. And if we go and visit the nether as well, we'll see a familiar world there too. There we have it. All of the chunks are still generated as they generated in our vanilla copy. Everything is copied across as expected. As long as all the files are copied across in the way that I showed, everything in your world should remain exactly the same. Just to prove that this is the spigot server, I'll run slash plugins and you'll see a list of plugins that are currently installed on the server. 
currently via version and via backwards. That's probably the greatest segue I've ever not planned, because in the description down below will be a link to a video discussing these very interesting plugins. Assuming that your server is currently older or newer than the clients connecting to it, using those plugins, which are again linked in a video in the description down below, will let any version of any Minecraft client join your server and play as if they were fully up to date and compliant with your server. But anyways, minor plug aside, that's about it for this video. Of course, once you're done, save hyphen all and stop your server when complete if you want to stop playing. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you found something useful in it. My name's been Technobo here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.